So we have two more of these shaft couplings in the shop that I'm going to bore. These are tapered bore. This is the sample right here, and this is the broach plug that matches it right there. So <clears throat> this is this is something for work, and I've shown one of these before in the past. I don't remember what episode it was, but I have shown one. And the reason why I like doing it here in my own shop is because my Monarch has an excellent taper attachment. The the lay that work, the ACK return, it has a taper attachment and it gives me fits every time I try to use it to the point to where I don't even want to touch it because I'll just grab the part that I'm trying to work on, I'll bring it home and I just do it in the evening here and, and get it done with instead of fighting with a taper attachment that doesn't want to work. The Monarch taper attachment always works and it's just built like it's supposed to. So that's why I do this here, you know, that's just a um, this is just a friendly thing between me and my workplace that you know we work out together and I've, I've had a lot of that stuff on my channel over the years and it helps me make a little bit of content to share with you guys on YouTube as well you know a little bit of the how-to and the machining part of it so you might ask why don't you use the compound to machine that taper so that's another way to do it if, if one had to put a taper in that you didn't have a taper attachment you could use a compound now, I don't like to use the compound because it's hard to get a really good finish in there a consistent finish when you're trying to hand crank uh, a compound dial you can't get a consistent cut like you would with a power feed so that's one of the reasons why I don't like using a compound to make a uh, something that's going to be kind of precision and, um, and supposed to have good finishes in it too now this right here, I did not make this brooch plug. Somebody else made it. You know, that's not my facing work right there, and this is not my turning work right there. But this, I can tell you that this was turned using a compound, and you can see how how kind of rough it is there. But this is it gets the job done. You know, this is a, a brooch plug, so that once the parts are uh, bored to the right size taper, you drop that down in there and you put it on the press, just kind of shim it up so that the cutter is straight and then uh, do your broaching. So that's it. I've already got the machine set to the proper taper. The last, I've actually done two of these. Uh, I think I showed one and I did another one. I didn't share that. And now I'm gonna do two more. These are spares so that when this machine goes down at two o'clock in the middle of the night, you know, Sunday morning, they don't have to call somebody and say, hey, we need one of these things machined. They have, a, they have one on the shelf. This is important for critical components in any kind of major operation. You know, this is for a, a, a large industrial plant here in town, and it goes on a shaft. You actually have two. You have, the other one is a two and a half inch straight bore. It probably goes on the electric motor. So just pretend this is going to go on electric motor and this is going on whatever piece of equipment is driving I have no idea what it's driving. I haven't asked But they run to, they'll run real real close together like that And you have another component which is kind of called the sleeve that slips over this and this gear these gear teeth it is what drives it so the sleeve that slips over this has a flange machine on it with bolt pattern and that's where these two will couple together so the the two flanges will bolt together here and this these gears the gear teeth are driving the sleeve or the flange that's going over that and this also allows for a little bit of a misalignment with uh, that right there okay so anyway let's go ahead and get started on them what do you say it's been a little while since I've wiped the machine down some and the, uh, the way is getting a little just kind of cruddy from the coolant drying on there and uh, not thoroughly cleaning it. So what I did is uh, it, I just wanted to show this since I was doing it because I get a lot of questions about this kind of stuff too is uh, how do you clean your machine. So I like to clean with WD-40. This is another one of my sprayers. Uh, it's, uh, it's a sure shot. Milwaukee sprayer just uh, branded safety clean 
And one of my viewers gave this to me some time back, and he, this was his favorite way of spreading WD-40 out, you know, or using it. So he gave me one just like his. So it works just like the, the green one that I showed before. Just uh, fill it up with WD and pressurize it, and it makes a nice fine mist, just like so that you can spread out on your machine. And you're not, the, the nice thing about atomizing it with this is that you're not wasting so much material. It sprays a, a real fine pattern of it. And uh, so anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm just giving everything a wipe down right here. And I was trying to clean the ways really good. I've still got the taper attachment set. I haven't cracked it loose. I'm just gonna leave it where it's at from that last one that I did. I actually didn't film that one. So just cleaning the machine off. So this thing, these work really well for WD-40 for all you guys that like to use WD like me. I even got the jaw still set the way it was whenever I took the last one out. So I got to be sure that I go in there the right direction. So the longer land here is actually going to go into the chuck. The larger bore, the large side of the taper is on this side of the coupling. I'm just going to push it back against the jaws. I'm going to snug up those two. And we'll use a couple indicators to make sure we get this thing trued up. So I'll use the edge tool post indicator to we'll bring this one over to indicate the OD. All right, and we'll go ahead and try the we'll try the dual indicator method right here. We'll go ahead and We will put this guy right here. Come on, line up. I'm trying to get it to where the handle's out of the way. Spin that around so that it looks a little bit better. All right, let's see what we got. You guys see that okay? Not too bad on the face there. So by the way, uh, Jack, this is the, the chuck key that you had given me. It's a nice size. It's, the handles are a little bit long, which I like, but uh, they can be a little bit kind of getting away in these tight quarters over here. I think it's going to work out good for the Monarch. I didn't even have to modify the square. I mean, it fits this Cushman perfect. I'm only tightening the highs at this point. Just watching that needle uh, go plus as I'm bringing this around and then adjusting it accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and back off now. Just loosening the lows. That's only about a thou right there. So how far out are we bumping this indicator on the face? About a thousandths. Let me get that to where it's a little easier for me to see it. That's about a half a thousandths on the face. And we'll go back to this one here. And now we're a half a thousandths out there. Okay, it looks like we're a half a thousandths on both. Should be plenty close right there.
These were those sample inserts that Dennis Nolan had given me a while back. Uh, Dennis Nolan from uh, Seco. And I was going through them. I decided I, I think I want to try one of them on this job. We're, we're probably going to try out the Seco TP200. And there's another one. Uh, I'm looking for Trigons, by the way, the uh, six-sided WNMG. There's another one right here, TP2500. Now, that's a pretty, pretty good insert for some tough turning right there. So might just save that. Let's try this TP200 and see what it does for this material that we're going to bore out. Dang, bag's on stuck together there. There you go. Looks like it's got a pretty decent chip breaker profile. So we'll see how it does. Last one I was using my favorite is car insert profile. that's down so a reminder since we're on this right here is to not over tighten these little cam screws ideally you can stand the wrenches up like that and tighten it and that really will give you what you need I do like to bring it over to this side and give it just a little bit extra but just don't over tighten those things and you won't ever have to worry about those things stripping out on you getting the insert set pretty close to that corner right there and then get my cross slide set to a zero so I just kind of bring it up and adjust this to where um, it's real close and crank it back and then I already have my backlash eliminated here and I've got it set to a zero so what we'll use is the the compound to uh, actually go in there and touch it off on Just touching that corner. So we'll bring it back. We'll just take 100,000 passes. We got it set to a 10,000 speed rate. That touch off we're really only taking about 485 thousandths that's what the large diameter measures I just want to look so it looks like that insert did really good right there so we're going to go ahead and feed back another hundred from right there and then come in go ahead and see where we're at on our diameter here so what we want our finish on our large diameter is going to be 3.485 it looks like we got 200 thousandths to come out of there still That was a slower feed rate on this pass. I backed it down to 5,000. Uh, it's 
kind of sneak it up on a nice finished cut. I'm breaking it into three cuts is what I'm doing. That's the last bit that I got to come out of there. That cutting oil helps, especially on boring like this. I find I found a long time ago that if you keep a little bit of cutting oil in there, it doesn't have to be a lot, but a little bit, it really helps to keep uh, from any kind of like chip galling in there, or if a chip gets caught over here, this side of the cutting tool between the bar and the bore, it usually scratches it and burrs it up. It seems to help that a lot. All right, so we got 60 thousandths. We're gonna do a 30 thousandths cut. Our finish this is looking great. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and get a measurement here. Should be about 30,000. So that's 54, 55, and we want 485. 30,000. I'm going to back out of the cut this time. That should be where we want it. All right, three thousandths over the 485, which is okay. We got a little bit of a tolerance there. That's my target size. All right, there's our broach plug and sample. All right. And it stuck. <laughs> Let me move this. I don't like my tools there when I'm moving stuff around. There we go. Okay. Last step, we're gonna go in there with my inch and a quarter of lower spar with a chamfering tool bit. And we want to cut a chamfer. Just looking at this tool bit there's enough space right here I'm looking through there and I see it and I see the point I'm bring it back till it touches and then back out we're clearing now I'll feed it in and cut that corner all right then let's let it slow down there and stop and I'm just going to inspect it and that looks good Go ahead and do this side right here just the same. That's it. So we're just going to take this one out now. We got it all done. And I've got the label to the top here just for a reference. There we go. So that's one down. We're just going to go ahead and get one more done. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get the second one chucked up and indicated. Just making sure there's no grit, little chips on the jaws there. Same thing on the face. Long side in. Okay, all right. Face is running out a little bit. I'm gonna try that one first and see. So that's a low, your high is right around there. And 
And so what I'm doing is I'm assuming that that face is true with the face of where this gear has been machined. And it may not. It's pretty well bumped up against the jaws there. It's not wanting to move anymore. Let's go ahead and adjust our OD. We'll start with the highs. Snug it. And get it to where y'all can see it a little bit better. It's a high. Loosen it up just a touch. All right, it's a half a thousandths, and I don't know if I'm going to get that face. right there all right we're gonna call that good okay well that one's <clears throat> these are finished up as far as what I'm doing right here this is the one that I just did this is the second one So as I said, we got to <clears throat> broach them, and then once I broach them, I uh, come in here on this side and I drill and tap for a set screw to uh, bind down on that on that key. And I would like to show the broaching here, but I don't have the press ready to go yet. So uh, that's something that I'm wanting to do is get it set up so that I can do some broaching here in the shop. I just want to show it here in my place. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that. And another one done, I'll bring you back for some more machine work, okay? set up the drill and tap for the two set screws. There's a set screws there. We'll put one over the key. Here's another simple use of the planer and shaper gauge. I've got it sitting across the jaws. And it's just sitting on the, the uh, bottom of the keyway right there to square it up and then snug the vise up. And you can also, another little easy way to do this because this isn't really too critical you can put a piece of key stock in there and use your machinist square to square it up that's another another way that I do it a lot of times as well but either one works pretty good and you can either find the center of the part with an edge finder or just line your drill bit up in the middle of that really depends on how critical it needs to be
All right, guys, we got all these finished up. Our Amera drives, flex couplings. And so we have these two here. This is the straight bore, and then these are both taper bores. So one set right here is going to be a uh, spare ordered by the customer. And then I've got, this is going to be a spare that I'm going to hold on to here so that next time this order comes up, I'll already be ahead of the game and have this one completed. And that one's just staying here with me. And so here is the sleeve that these hubs go in. It's right there and you can see the, the gear teeth inside. So you'll have two of these flanges that bolt together. And then the flex hub is one that goes on each shaft is what rides in the center right there. So these pretty much float on the flex hubs there they go on the shaft. And you can see the, the wear in there. And some of that could be due to a, a excessive misalignment. But that's one of the purposes of these flex hubs is that allow for a little bit of angular misalignment. All right, so that's it there. We got that one finished up.